Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by American Digger Magazine and Smoky Mountain Red Room, and we're back! God! <laughs> we are literally way out in the middle of nowhere, Utah. Isaac, stand up and show, show how far out of nowhere we are. There is nothing near here except some cows and maybe like a wild boro or something like that. I think we saw some wild burrows on the way in. So, but here's why we're out here, okay? The United States of America has some fantastic public lands to go out and look for fossils and stuff. And this is one of those areas that are like that. Is that correct? It is, yes. Yeah. Yep. And what we, what, where we're at, we're near Mounds, Utah. So we actually are kind of near a place, but we're out looking for late Jurassic marine fossils, and they're everywhere. See, here's the thing is, is that fossils aren't rare, they're everywhere, you just gotta know where to look. Ty, what do we got going, what has drug us way out here? <laughs> <laughs> well, what this is, is this is an old marine environment, it's old reef type environment. Okay. This is when there was an ocean up through the middle of America that split the continent right in half. Okay, the Great Inland the Sea. The Great Inland Sea. Yeah. And this was shallow enough environment that, uh, you know, there was a lot of life. It was, you know, 200 feet shallower. Um, it was full of, you know, all the stuff you'd see nowadays, the shells and the ammonite. Well, we don't have ammonites now, but all the clams and all the stuff like that. And so what happened is, back behind us, you can see this yellow sandstone came in. Some event happened, and it buried it really fast, so it preserved all this stuff, and so it fossilized. That, so that yellow sandstone, can you guys see the yellow sandstone back there? See that yellow sandstone? So that's one event? That's one event. What? All that. It would have been one big, huge event. It came in and buried it up real quick. No way. That's so cool. Yeah. Just like a big tsunami, a big hurricane does nowadays and washes a bunch of coastline, pushes a bunch of dirt out, yeah. buries up all the life. Same thing happened. And so that buried all this stuff. So, what, what kind of. So, so how, how do you find these fossils? How do we well, go about this, finding this? This location, the fossils are in, they've kind of nucleated, they've turned into nodules. So, every nodule, every nice round limestone nodule you see is going to have fossils in it of some sort and then you walk around you get in the right layer and they are just coming out all over you'll see the broken ones covered with fossils and you'll see the whole ones that aren't broken yet and they're literally all over the oh, place we were over, yeah we were walking around and we picked up a handful to show you guys what these looked like and these are what the and i mean they're every size from this big to around this size right here. And what's wild is if you look, you can already see the fossils starting to come out of this rock right here. So Ty, we were talking earlier, like look at this one. That's got a big fossil going around right there. A little tor, what do they call them? Tor tortella. Tortella. The spiral shell is the tortella, yeah. So, you know, we were talking earlier about you know why these fossils nucleate this way and you were saying science really doesn't have any think, explanation I don't, well i mean i think there is but i don't know if it's a definitive explanation if it, it's a chemical reaction with the organic and the different minerals around it i mean i'm not smart enough to go into detail on it but it's kind of it, like how iron when iron leaches out it leaches captures out, all it captures kinds of stuff, all stuff yeah. probably it's that same similar. kind of thing only yeah. in an organic way exactly that's wild. Well, let's break up some of these Alrighty. fossils and see and what we've got inside. There's a we broke already, too. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, you want to go, ahead, well, I mean, yeah, you go ahead and grab some. We'll just show a couple of these that we broke up here already, just to show. Tortellas and bivalve clams and all sorts of things. Here's something we were really hoping to get after is a little ammonite yeah, we'll right here. We'll have to here. find some bigger ones to find some better ammonites. That's Isn't what that cool? people are after when they come here. You there know, are a million types of fossil shells. Razor clams. And the thing is, is you know, we're, we've got species that are around today and we've got species mm -hmm. like this yep, that, that no longer exist anymore. Exactly. That's so cool, man. That is so cool. Now Let's, one go one thing for people to look at is if they come out of this place is you've got a couple different types of nodules to look at. You've got ones that are fresh, eroded out and they're going to be a lot harder and you're going to have to work harder to break them and you're also going to have a better odds of the fossils getting broken as you break them okay if you can find the ones that are weathered and have cracks showing already 
they'll naturally want to pop around those fossils for you and it'll take a lot less effort to break those up. Now what's causing that? Because we got some that are freshly eroded and some that have been out for a while. What are the geologic forces that are causing that to got, happen? It's just a freeze thaw, just a breaking it up because it heats, heats and contracts and heats and contracts and the water gets in the cracks and expands and just the natural erosion that just is breaking this mountain down. Okay. So it, because the fossil is different density than the sediment, it, they flex it, they expand and contract at a different rate and it will separate. Okay, that makes sense. So you're basically, you're wanting nature to do the work for you. To do the work you. for yeah. you, yeah. Nice, nice. Let's see what we got in here. You see the crack forming and you just chase it around a little bit. Let's bring it down here a little ways. Let these guys see. Watch this thing crack in action. As you can so, see. So you can see on this one, there's, there's an ammonite that popped out already that was gone when we got it. And you can see there's some shells sticking, shells out, sticking out, little fossils. So we're just gonna chase this crack around. So as you're hammering it, why, why is it cracking in a straight line like that? Well, there's something in there that wants to crack, wants to break. See, like it naturally broke right there and there's probably a fossil underneath. Or there's not. I mean, you just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just wherever the freeze thaw has naturally already started, already that, started crack. that crack. Okay, that makes sense. See all the fossils in there. See the bird's a big clam. That's a big. Oh, clam. whoa! That big is clam. huge. Look at that. That is nuts. Get a little water on it. You can see it a little bit better. See there we go. Now you can see it a little bit better. You can see a great big tortella at the edge of one right here. The big spirals. Oh wow. Oh man, that is huge. Yeah, that's a pretty big one. That's a pretty Holy nice one. Cow. You want to take your time a little bit because you don't want to break them if you can help it. I mean, they've survived millions of years to get to this point. You might as well take the time to... Yep. Look at that. God, that's awesome. Whoa. So cool. Look at that. That is... Now, that's a Tortula? That's a Tortula, yeah. Tortula. Yep. Man, that is incredible. All right, so these nodules are literally all over the ground out here. We've got some... Some here, one withering out there. Whole one there that's just starting to come there. out. But we've got these real big boulders behind us. What do we got going on with them? Well, this is the same thing. This is one of these big nodules. You're kidding. No, it is. It, for some reason, every once in a while, and if you look, they're kind of evenly spaced. Yeah. They nucleated and they grew big. What? They don't know, I mean, I've never seen them with like full of fossils like these little ones are, but the centers of them usually have something that nucleated again on. And still, there it is, it's, there's something, we don't know why the fossils caused yeah. that to happen, to yeah. nucleate so large like that. Come check this out. This is insane, here's what we're talking about. So we're looking for these little balls right here. Yeah, there's a couple of these bowling balls coming out of the ground, and you can see the fossils in them. And then you've and got then you got this one here. But look, see, there's a bowling ball in the middle of it. That is insane. In fact, there's an ammonite sticking at the top of it. Right oh there. no way! Cool. And then if you look over here, look, there's this one grew big enough. It took a second one in. Take a second one. Second one. That is insanely this piece, cool. This would have been a nice round nodule. This piece rolled off. It's facing the wrong yep. way. So that's the piece of that that's one the piece right that there. That's the piece that rolled off. And see, oh, you can see the fossils really well on this one. That's For some awesome. reason, you've got the regular nodule, but these ones supersize, and I, I personally don't know why. Yeah. Take somebody smarter than me. See, that's what's so cool about geology in this world that we live in is because you know there's still all these crazy yeah. mysteries that we've still science still has yeah. yet to figure out. Ah, that's so cool. <laughs> cool. This is out here for you guys to come do and you guys to find. That's what's incredible about this country and our public lands is, is you can literally come out here and discover this history. This isn't this isn't rare stuff once oh. you know where to look. There we go. There's an ammonite. Oh, nice. It's a little bit dirty, but that's Good an ammonite. A little ammonite. Yep. That's great. You know, and that that's what we've got here in this in this country is we've got these incredible public lands that you can go out and you can look for these little fossils on the surface like this. How can people get involved? How can they do this? Well, the local clubs or local rock counting clubs are the best way. Yeah. Those people have been doing it in that area for a long time. If you're traveling and you want to see some 
you know, you're going to a new state and you want to do some rock counting, write a letter to the local club and ask. There's a lot of old timers that just looking for an excuse to get off the chair and go do something for a weekend and they like showing people. Yeah. And nowadays with the internet, Google that area. Google rock counting something area and it will come up. You will find things you didn't know there was. Yeah. Now for these kind of fossils, are there any kind of permits that you need to be out here to collect okay, this so stuff? Okay, so invertebrate fossils, shells, ammonites, things like that are perfectly legal to collect. Okay. If you're, if you find something that's vertebrate, if you were to find fish, if you were to find dinosaur, if you were to find something with a spine, you cannot collect it. Okay, so the invertebrate stuff, the marine stuff, marine like stuff what we've got collect. going on here, yes. this is all perfectly legal. Yes. But as soon as we find something that had a, when we say vertebrate, we mean a vertebrae. It's got a spine yeah, going it down had its a back. Spine, yep. like a dinosaur or a fish or anything like that. That is something of an example of something that we can't collect legally. No, not on public land. No. Nope. So that's that's cool. So th how rare is this stuff? I mean, how long it's does not. this layer? This layer. How goes, big is this, this layer? layer? Goes for about twelve hundred miles. <laughs> God, that's nuts. <laughs> it goes from Arizona to Canada, You're right kidding. on top of the Morrison Formation. You're kidding? No. Okay, so the Morrison Formation is a pretty pretty well known formation. Yes. So and it's right below. It's right this. below us. Yes. Okay, so we've got dinosaurs right below this yes. how, how did dinosaurs get down and then we got we, we've got <laughs> well clams as, as as the mountains of the west were washing the, you had that inland sea and where the dinosaurs were at was marshy swampy um river delta type scenario okay well this area was still subsiding it was still sinking as the mountains were raising up to the west from us so this actually got deeper and the water got deeper rather than filling in with sediment. So the, the okay. inland sea was growing at that time. Okay, and it just happened to encapsulate where, I mean, we're talking millions and millions, yeah, we're and millions, millions of years. Of years. Yeah. How, yeah. how many millions of years from the dinosaurs to these guys? Uh, I think it's from the actual, of the actual layer, it's probably only about 10 million years. So within 10 mm -hmm. million years, you've got dinosaurs, and then all of a sudden you've got, in the same period, the Jurassic, you've got the marine stuff on top yes. of it. A, a good way to think about it and look at it is look at New Orleans right now. When they built New Orleans, it was above sea level. And a lot of it is below sea level now. Wow. As it's because that land is subsiding. It's subsiding. Wow, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I didn't I didn't think about that. Yeah. That is really cool. There's all kinds of stuff to go out in this country and find, and your public lands are your greatest resource for invertebrate fossils to go discover. Like Ty was saying, there's literally 1,200 miles of this exposed straight shot. This stuff isn't rare. It's out there for you to discover. All you've got to do is just get out of that, get off of that couch and away from that computer screen and get out there and do it. Locate your local, local lot, rock club wherever you're at. In any state, there's one literally right in your area. So, Ty, this is cool, man. Anything yeah. else you want to mention? No, I mean, that's it. Just have fun. Be respectful. Stay yeah. on the roads. Don't collect piles and piles. I yeah. mean, that's the biggest mistake a lot of people make with this is they think they have to collect it all. Yeah. And you spend a lifetime doing this, your grandkids are going to hate you for the pile in your backyard. Yeah. Be really selective. Leave some for the next generation. But have fun. There's stuff out here. <laughs> Look at this. It's sticking out of the rock. And there's 1,200 miles of this. That is insane, dude. Yes. This is so cool. Guys, thank you all for watching. Come back and see us on all of our other episodes. Follow our channel at at uh, Chasing History. You can follow us on Facebook at Chasing History and Smoky Mountain Relic Room. Be sure to check out American Digger Magazine. They're a fantastic publication to learn about how you can get out there and discover this kind of history. Follow us on a brand new podcast, Chasing History Radio. And we will never, ever, ever be on Twitter because we got too much crap to follow already and i ain't <laughs> fooling with twitter it's just it's it's too much ty dude thank you so you much betcha. for having us out here you, bet. you guys remember be good to yourselves be good to others others and just be good people history rocks Woohoo!